Okay, so Dr. Grubbs actually stated that Egypt was the breadbasket of the ancient world. So we have here um, representation of the Nile, and uh, they were wealthy, they were a protected and peaceful society, they had writing. Um, but we're actually looking at the standard 613, so we're comparing the two river valley civilizations of Mesopotamia and Egypt. Uh, by using their language, government, trade systems, architecture, and social order. So if we look, um, their architecture, they both use mud bricks in their buildings. Um, now for the pyramids, uh, Egyptians actually had stones um, from other places. Um, Mesopotamia, they built their ziggurats, uh, religious. Um, they seem more concerned with life on earth. Egypt uh, was more concerned with the afterlife and having eternal life. Um, their social systems were very similar. They both had a ruler of some sort, um, priests, uh, farmers, slaves, or unskilled workers. Um, Narmer, he's down here saying, I united Upper and Lower Egypt. Uh, Sargon, he actually created the world's first empire. His duty is to create um, peace and honor the gods to keep them happy. So uh, for Mesopotamians, they were very concerned with um, having a peaceful society, and the king was expected to do that. Um, Narmer was able to create that peaceful society. So they were both river valley civilizations. Um, a little bit of a difference here is Tigris and Euphrates, as Dr. Grubbs stated, had torrential flooding. Um, the Nile was peaceful, gentle. They had protection by the deserts on either side um, and the cataracts. Um, if you look at our timeline, they're very similar um, in some ways. They both had some type of writing systems. Um, Mesopotamians used pitcher writing in 3200 BCE, where Egyptians were developing hieroglyphs, um, and there was some mention that um, because these two traded, um, they might have gotten the ideas from each other. Uh, 3100 BC, Narmer Palette actually describes how Narmer united the two kingdoms of Egypt. Uh, 2600 um, BCE, the royals in Mesopotamia were actually buried with their attendants and some other items. So there is a suggestion there that they might um, actually have some similarities with um, some of the uh, higher class citizens actually being buried with items they might need um, later on. Um, in uh, 2375, the pyramid text actually describe how you, um, you know, would get to the afterlife. Um, it kind of gives you a guide. Uh, 2340, Sargon comes to power. Uh, 2100 BC in Egypt, uh, they wrote a hymn to the Nile, which kind of uh, describes how important the Nile is. And uh, 24th century BCE, uh, there were some letters in Mesopotamia which kind of um, spoke about trade. Um, in 6th century uh, Egypt, they introduced camels in that was interesting because normally camels were something that you automatically think were there because of the desert area, um, but they weren't. So um, they both had trade systems. Now in Mesopotamia, they actually developed tokens in 8,000 BCE, um, which uh, the running kind of moved here to 3100 BCE. This was a symbol for bread. Um, I also included in 1822 the Rosetta Stone because that was kind of the key to unfolding um, our hieroglyphics and um, us being able to decode Egyptian writing and find out all uh, about their amazing society. Now back to the question on whether you can or not you can say definitely um, that Egypt was the breadbasket of the ancient world. Um, I would argue that um, Egypt had it a little bit different being protected and peaceful, you know, um, that gave them the upper hand. Uh, if you're constantly having to worry about being flooded out and rebuilding your society, um, you are going to have to um, 
worry about invasion from other people, um, whereas Egypt was um, able to develop that wealth and concentrate and focus on building these great pyramids and wonders that they were able to build. Um, and my sources for this, uh, Dr. Grubbs, of course, and then we had the video from PBS on the pyramid, the ancient Egyptian world, and the ancient Near Eastern world.